Hi everybody. Welcome back to Let's Play Dragon Age Origins. Well, I thought it was going to the end game. I didn't realise we only had two days. And now Denerim is under assault by the Darkspawn. The As death toll will be staggering. I wish you luck. I suppose it remains to be seen what sort of king Alistair will make. Personally, I think the lad will do far better than he believes. He is Merrick's son, whether he sees it or not. He has a good heart. I can think of no better qualification. Are there any other allies we can use? We have sent messengers to Orle. With any luck, the Empress will send us help within a week. I think it entirely possible, however, that she has written Ferelden off as a lost cause already, and will seek to defend her empire first. Perhaps the Grey Wardens of Orle will be able to march and reach us in time. We should not rely on their arrival, even so. Alright, I should get to my room. Hope I don't have to share a room with Alistair. I stand here staring out to the east, and I can feel it. I suspect that you can too. Yeah, you mean the Archdemon, right? As if it weren't enough that one of the most noble and terrible creatures ever to be spawned of our world should be twisted into something so unnatural. I cannot imagine what we shall do once we encounter it. Do you have a plan? No, actually, it's a major problem right now. Do you have a suggestion? No, truly I don't. And more's the pity. If you will excuse me, I need to meditate to gather my strength. If I am to be of any use to you, come the morning. May the Creator smile on you come battle, Lethalon. And what word have we from Orzammar? Has House Claret sent their men or haven't they? Eh, stalling. Which is as good as a no. House Claret's feud with House Romald has flared up again since their son died in that Deep Roads business. So naturally they are pleading the need for self-defense. <laughs> Find time to start with that nonsense again. I've half a mind to... <sighs> Evening to you, Grey Warden. I didn't realize you were still up and about. Is there a fucking problem with the Dwarven forces? Nothing that can be dealt with now, I'm afraid. Just one of the houses being thicker than the stone that made them. Once all of this blight business is done, there will be a reckoning in the assembly. They're probably half hoping we'll all wind up dead. That way they'll have one of the strongest forces left in Orzammar. Enough to face the dark spawn all on their own, I suppose? That's exactly the kind of half hour thinking that got us into the mess after Endrin passed. It was our good fortune that you decided to go to Orzammar when you did, Grey Warden. For all that a surfacer needed our help, I expect we needed yours more. Yeah, I fucking know about it. Carry on dithering about and not achieving anything. Right. Off to camp with both of you, and keep the drunkenness to a minimum. We have a long way to go yet. Pleasant evening to you, Grey Warden. And good fortune on the field of battle. Should not be some more people to talk to? Oh, you noisy little shit. I wish I got rid of you. See anything interesting, noisy little shit? <coughs> Banny returns with looks, what looks to be a hundred-year-old bottle of wine. Dust still clings to it. Gabog's backcountry reserve. I don't think I want to waste it on Ogren though. Lightly dropped to avoid seizure by authorities, or because of seizure due to drinking it. Garbolg only brewed from 874 to 892 Blessed Age, killed when the vapours in his beer spontaneously ignited. You called. I am hardly surprised. Very well. As you wish. Here. It seems an appropriate moment to give you this. Is that an earring? I acquired it on my very first job for the Crows. A Raveni merchant prince, and he was wearing a single jeweled earring when I killed him. In fact, that's about all he was wearing. I thought it was beautiful and took it to mark the occasion. I've kept it since, and I'd like you to have it. Thank you, Zevran. It's so beautiful. Don't get the wrong idea about it. You killed Talison. As far as the Crows will be concerned, I died with him. That means I'm free, at least for now. 
feel free to sell it or wear it, whatever you like. It's really the least I could give you in return. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. It's meant a lot to me, but so have... So has what you've done. Thank you. I, I have no better way to say it. What's on your mind? It is no trouble. You and your friends are formidable folk, indeed. It's good to have you along on the road. I'm sure... Ah, oh, he's got some more potions. That's pretty good. I never gave anything to my forces. Probably too late now. Oh, nice. He's got a full set of stuff. Well, oh, that was very expensive. That was probably very silly. Well, that's all my money gone. I hope I can do some herbalism in a second. I got a moment. Hey, sure. Aye. All right, then. I know that look. You have something on your mind, don't you? Yeah. What do you know of this place? Redcliffe? I know little of it except that it is the domain of the Isle of Redcliffe. Redcliffe. I wonder how the name came to be. Is the clay here red? There are places in this world where the clay is a bright, strange red, and often, in the legends of such places, it is the red of blood. The blood of a thousand men slaughtered in battle, or that of an innocent, unjustly slain. It stains the land that it may never be forgotten. Perhaps Redcliffe has one such tale. But I do not know it. Oh, I don't know where I'm going then. Guess I'm going upstairs. It is begun. Another gift for low gain. Riordan and Alistair. There you are. Let's go see what Riordan has to say. As you say. Morrigan. What comes, my friend? So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> hmm. If you're a bloke, I'm sure when I played this game before, she had my what baby. What comes, my friend? Let's just make sure we haven't heard this. So, full of questions. <laughs> well, that depends, does it not? What does she seem to be? Well, she's dead. Powerful Malefica. I'm sure we've done this. You mean, is she truly the Flemeth of legend and story? Tell me, how much do you know of the tale? The one that the Chastened still tell of my mother, to frighten them into obedience? Uh, I read the journal, yeah. I'm sure we've done this, I'm more interested in the truth. I can relay what Flemeth once told me herself, and you can decide whether or not tis the truth, if you desire. Yeah, alright, but make it quick. As the tale is sung by the bards, there was a time when Flemeth was young and beautiful. A fair lass in a land of barbarian men, the desire of any who saw her. Yeah, I heard this part. The tales say that Flemeth fell in love with Osin the bard, and fled the castle of her husband, the dreadlord Conobar, and that he swore vengeance for her infidelity. In truth, 
My mother claims that twas Osun who was her husband, and Conobar the jealous lord, who looked on from afar. Lord Conobar approached young Osun and offered him wealth and power in exchange for his lovely wife. And Osun agreed. What an indecent proposal. Flemeth must have been pretty pissed. The life of a bard is a poor one, and love fades in the wake of hunger. It was Flemeth who suggested the arrangement. All would have been well had Lord Conobar kept his end of the bargain. But he was a foul man who bargained with coin he did not possess. Osun was led off to a field and slain, left for dead. Flemeth spoke to the spirits and learned of the deed, and swore revenge. So do you think she truly loved Osun then? That was not the point. Conobar had no honor, so she would not have him. Flemeth begged the spirits to aid her, and twas they who slew Conobar. The demon the legend tells of came later. Lord Conobar's allies chased Flemeth, you see. Chased her to the wilds, and there she hid. There she found the demon, and he made her strong. The legends all speak of the great hero Cormac, he who defeated Flemeth and her great army when she invaded the lowlands centuries later. All lies. No, I don't think we have heard this. How have I missed this in like 80 episodes? It's funny though that even my people have heard of Cormac. The truth of the matter is that there was never an invasion. As Flemeth tells it, the Chastened never raised an army under her banner and she never fought with any warrior named Cormac. Cormac led a brutal civil war against his own people and later claimed it was to vanquish evil that had taken root amongst the Lords. Thus, he was hailed a hero. Flemeth was only attached to the legend much later. Perhaps it was due to the great war with the Chastened that eventually came, but Mother claims not to know how it began. We have had this. Aren't abominations usually insane horrors though, like my mate Wynne? How often is this usually? Always? If not always, then when is it not true? There are more things in this world and the next than you or I could ever hope to understand. What Flemeth became is a mystery. I suspect even to her. That was an interesting story, thank you. Flemeth tells it with far more embellishment than I, but you are welcome. Dare I ask of your own mother? Few are abominations of legend, tis true, but I find myself curious nevertheless. My mother died a long time ago when I went to the circle. Ah, then you have my sympathies for what it is worth. Which is very little, I am certain. It matters not. Let us move on. Yeah, we had all had all that before. Well, that was a delay in seeing Riordan. You're both here. Good. Please know I assumed you had already been told. Otherwise, I would have told you this when you freed me in Denerim. I'm sorry. What is it? What are you apologizing for? Tell me. Have you ever wondered why the Grey Wardens are needed to defeat the Darkspawn? Yes, I have wondered that. The Archdemon may be slain, as any other Darkspawn. But should any other than a Grey Warden do the slaying, it will not be enough. The essence of the beast will pass through the taint to the nearest Darkspawn and will be reborn anew in that body. The dragon is thus all but immortal. But if the Archdemon is slain by a Grey Warden, its essence travels into the Grey Warden instead. That doesn't sound very healthy. A Darkspawn is an empty, soulless vessel, but a Grey Warden is not. The essence of the Archdemon is destroyed, and so is the Grey Warden. Meaning... the Grey Warden who kills the Archdemon... dies? Yes. Without the Archdemon, the Blight ends. It is the only way. I wonder if Wynne knew this the whole time. I guess it's up to one of the three of us then to kill this thing. 
In Blight's past, when the time came, the eldest of the Grey Wardens would decide which amongst them would take that final blow. If possible, the final blow should be mine to make. I am the eldest and the taint will not spare me much longer. But if I fail, the deed falls on you. The Blight must be stopped now, or it will destroy all of Ferelden before the rest of the Grey Wardens can assemble. Remember that. But enough. There will be much to do tomorrow and little enough time to rest before it. I will let you return to your rooms. I will see you once the army is ready to march then. I guess this ends soon, one way or another. That it does, my friend. That it does. The falling out with Alistair seems a bit petty now, because he didn't want to murder someone that he thought it would be a politically bad decision to kill. I've made a right mess for myself. You should get some sleep before morning. There will be much to do when the army marches. Do not be alarmed. It is only I. Morrigan, is everything all right? I am well. Tis you who are in danger. I have a plan, you see. A way out. The loop in your hole. I know what happens when the Archdemon dies. I know a Grey Warden must be sacrificed, and that sacrifice could be you. I have come to tell you that this does not need to be. What, what do you mean? I offer a way out. A way out for all the Grey Wardens that there need be no sacrifice. A ritual. Performed on the eve of battle. In the dark of night. I wonder if she's going to become a darkspawn. Uh, if I'm going to ever make this up to Alistair, I'd, I, I, I'm interested. Look, I'm already heartbroken. Just tell me more. What I propose is this. Convince Alistair to lay with me here tonight. And from this ritual, a child shall be conceived within me. The child will bear the taint, and when the Archdemon is slain, its essence will seek the child like a beacon. At this early stage, the child can absorb that essence and not perish. The Archdemon is still destroyed with no Grey Warden dying in the process. Hmm, this doesn't sound right at all. The child becomes Darkspawn. Not at all. It will become something different. A child born with the soul of an old god. After this is done, you allow me to walk away. And you do not follow. Ever. The child will be mine to raise as I wish. Uh, why Alistair? Why not Riordan? Even if I thought Riordan could be convinced, he is unsuitable. I need one who has not been tainted for long. It must be him, and it must be tonight. I don't know, it does sound like a way out of all my immediate problems. I mean, how much trouble could one god be? I mean, she insists it's going to stop the Blight. What if the Blight comes back? How do you know this will work? This is what my mother intended when she sent me with you. She was the one who first gave me this ritual and told me of what I was meant to do. This does not surprise you, does it? Did you not wonder why Flemeth saved your life? Why she aided you? This is why. What is important is that I am offering this to you now. It will work, and it will save your life. Okay, but I want to know more about the child. As you wish. Will the child be evil? What will it become? Allow me to say that what I seek is the essence of the old god that once was, and not the dark forces that corrupted it. Some things are worth preserving in this world. Make of that what you will. Yes, yeah, good point. Well, that is true. That's probably our best bet to sort of get rid of the Chantry, is it? 
bring back the old gods. I, the child won't be hurt. Well, the child doesn't currently exist, so... If the child wants to exist at all, this is what has to happen. And what's, there's obviously a chance she won't get pregnant anyway. What do you intend to do with the child? I do not wish to tell you. I insist. I need to know what you're planning. The child will represent freedom. For an ancient power, a chance to be reborn apart from the taint. Is that not reason enough to do it? I will raise the child apart from the rest of society and teach it to respect that from which it came. Beyond that, you need know nothing else. What if Alistair wants to see the child? I have no doubt he may, but he will not. It is all I ask for in return. I see. Well, that's enough about the child, then. Then you have decided? I, I just think... I think it's the best chance for... for freedom for mages, isn't it? Because we haven't done anything about the Templars and the Chantry. We haven't really had the option. I don't know if it'll benefit or disadvantage the elves. It'll advantage me. And I kind of feel bad for losing my temper with Alistair just because he wouldn't kill Anora. I did really hate Anora. And equally, Alistair wanted an heir, didn't he? He might not have a chance. There's a one in two chance he'll die. At least a one in two chance he'll die. And he was all about an heir. If he's going to shag someone else, I'd rather it was Morrigan. I'd like it if I was involved, but that's not an option. Probably. Actually, it probably is an option. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'll try and try and sort this out. It'll give me some time, won't it? It'll give me some time to sort my life out before I die. A wise decision. I shall wait here, then, while you go and speak with Alistair. I urge you to be convincing. Little time remains. I suggest you go to Alistair's room quickly. Uh, I, I have no idea how I'll convince him to do this. I suggest you think of something for both your sakes. And the only chance I'll have to kill... If if he doesn't go through with it, then I'll... He'll, be, he'll die. And I'll go kill Queen Honora, who he loves so fucking much. How's that for a plan? I see you can't sleep either. I also saw Morrigan outside your room earlier. And the look she gave me... Oh, that was icy even for her. Is something up? So, uh... You can't sleep? Are you alright? Not really. All these men look at me and, and I see it in their eyes. I'm their king. Suddenly it feels so real. But now you're changing the subject. This isn't about me. This is about Morrigan. I'm tired, but I'm not stupid. What did she want? Well, Alistair, we need to talk. Oh. I guess whatever Morrigan had to say, it's big. This is what I get for becoming king. Everyone always brings you the bad news. So what is it then? Rats running amok? Cheese supplies run low? I can take it. Also, the more Grey Wardens that stay alive, the more chance we have of rebuilding the Grey Wardens. How about that as a plan? Look, uh, uh, I'm sorry we fell out. Can you and I be friends? Right? Friends? I owe you everything. Even if you did go and make me king. Why? Why so ominous? Look, what if I told you there's a way to avoid dying tomorrow? You mean with the Archdemon, right? If you mean running away, I can't do that. But you don't mean that, do you? What is this about? Let's uh, break it with a joke. Look, your wild dreams have come true. Sex with Morrigan. Ha <laughs> ha! All right, that's pretty funny. Nice way to cut the tension. So, what's really up? 
No, I'm, I'm completely serious. It's part of a ritual. <laughs> Cute. This is payback, right, for all the jokes? But you're not joking. You're actually serious? Wow. Be killed by the Archdemon or sleep with Morrigan. How does someone make that kind of choice? You're not actually asking me this, are you? What kind of ritual is this, anyway? I don't really know. But it will produce a child. What? I... I must be hearing things, but are you telling me to impregnate Morrigan in some kind of magical sex rite? This... this child... Why would Morrigan want such a thing? Does she want an heir to the throne? Well, uh, yeah. That's a good point. Maybe she just... Maybe she's just tricking both of us and all she wants is an heir to the throne. That is possible. Why don't we go ask her that, actually? Yeah, come ask her. Now, there's a conversation I'm looking forward to. Look... Even if I was willing to do this, and I'm not saying I am, do you really think this is a good idea? You're my friend, but we're talking about Morrigan. Look, mate, this is the best plan we've had. This is the best plan on the table. You need to trust me. Trust you? I... Very well. I do trust you. Oh, where is she? Let's go and get this over with before I change my mind. Twould seem your talk is done. Great. This isn't a dream after all. What is it to be then? Has a decision been reached? Yeah, good. Do the organ grinder. Alistair has agreed to your request. W wait. I want to ask about this child, the one you want. Interesting. Honesty wouldn't have been my first choice. I just want to be sure that you're not going to use this against Ferelden. That this bastard child of mine isn't going to show up some year. Of that, you have my word. <sighs> oh, why don't I feel any better about this? All right, let's just get this over with. Let us go somewhere more private, Alistair, and believe me when I say you will not hate this quite so much as you believe. Garin. I feel like I'm sleeping, but I guess I'm not. While most of the bands and isles of Ferelden cart their children with them to the lands meet, in the interest of eventually marrying them off, Connor has spent his entire life at Redcliffe. And it's hardly surprising, the child possessed the gift of magic. By law, he should have been taken to the Circle of Magi at the first sign, abdicating his claim to Redcliffe. Instead, the boy was kept out of public view and his magic hushed up, with disastrous results. All mages are beacons that attract the attention of the Fade Spirits. Because of this, they are trained and tested by the Circle to ensure that they can withstand attacks from malevolent Fade creatures that seek entry into the waking world. Untrained Connor drew the attention of a powerful demon that tore the Veil asunder. He was freed from the demon's power at a terrible price, the cost of his mother's life. Connor himself will be sent to the Circle, where he will no longer endanger innocent people. Arlene and Garin Nobility does not exist without obligation. We owe all that we have, even our lives, to our land and our people. As the maternal uncle of King Caelan, Arl Eamon is one of the king's most trusted advisers. Redcliffe, while not a large or especially wealthy part of Ferelden, is a critical strategic location. 
the fortress guards the western pass that leads to Orlais, as well as the major trade route with Orzammar. A well-respected man, though not the most charismatic, King Caelan once said of him, My uncle Eamon is a man everyone thinks well of, when they remember him at all. He fell ill with a mysterious condition that not even magic could treat. It was no common ailment. Eamon was poisoned by a blood mage, Jowan, who claimed to be working for Tern Loghain. The Isle's life was saved only by the most extraordinary measures, finding the urn of sacred ashes, the remains of Andraste herself. His health restored, Eamon called a landsmeet with the goal of wresting power from Loghain and placing Alistair on the throne. With the question of the succession settled, Eamon returned to Redcliffe to prepare the castle's defences for the encroaching blight. King Endrin Idukan. Denial of the traditions of our people does not qualify as a political technicality. Endrin of House Idukan traces his ancestry back to the Paragon Idukan, the greatest warrior of Orzammar's history, who beat back the Dartspawn hordes in the First Blight. The second son of King Angar Idukan, he became heir after his elder brother died in approving. The most respected king in four generations, he restored contact with Cal Shirok, the only other remaining city of the once vast Dwarven Empire, which had been lost during the First Blight. Knight Commander Gregor It is the innocent folk of Ferelden who matter. I would lay down my life, and the life of any mage, to protect them. Grim and taciturn, Gregor has been Knight Commander of the Templar forces stationed at the Circle Tower for so many years that hardly anyone except the First Enchanter recalls that he is not simply part of the Tower itself. Lord Peril Haramont No one is born with rights to the throne. The sitting king may recommend a successor, but the assembly ultimately decides who will rule. House Haramont is one of the oldest noble houses, as old as Orzammar itself. Endrin's most trusted advisor, Haramont is well known for being an able administrator, and the author of many compromises in the ever-warring assembly. Haramont's promise to King Endrin to keep Balon off the throne was upheld by the intervention of one paragon and the Grey Warden Trini. Haramont was named king by the assembly, ending the internal strife in Orzammar. Al Rendon Howe It appears there will be a civil war after all, despite the Darkspawn. Pity. The Arling of Amaranthine winds along the sinuous northeastern coast of Ferelden. The waking sea is known for its temper, and the storms that sweep in from the warmer northern waters are sudden and brutal. These are the lands of Rendon Howe. He was born during the occupation, and like many of the nobles at the time, joined Prince Marek's rebels. He fought alongside young Bryce Coosland, future Tern of High Ever, and the Onus Bryland, future Isle of the South Reach, at the bloody Battle of White River. It was the most catastrophic defeat of the entire occupation, from which only 50 rebel soldiers escaped. Although he was decorated for valour by King Marek, Howe's abrasive manners have earned him almost universal dislike amongst his peers. Howe died at the hands of Trini in Denerim. <laughs>